Hi guys, it's Dan from evconsumer.com. I'm just gonna show you my Nissan Leaf. Um, this is the SL version. Uh, as you can tell, very nice car. Um, super reliable, I've had no problems with it. There she is in all her glory. Uh, as you can tell, I have uh, hooked up directly to my house. Let's show you that there. So I got the Siemens model right here. As you can tell, it's all charged up, ready to go. Um, it's got, actually let's talk about this for a second. It's got the um, delay timer. So you can actually set it to charge in so many minutes or like hours. So that way you're saving uh, money when you charge at night versus when you charge during the day. Cause I get, uh, I think it's like a double the price actually in Ontario where I am right now and uh, that's just part of it so that's why you delay it but i just plug it in anyway it's so cheap it doesn't even matter um let's have a look inside i actually have my key in my pocket so you press once twice to get the uh, back open this is a little introduction to my car it's got room for a baby seat in the back Interior is pretty good. Um, headliner is a little cheap, but that's okay because everything else is made up for in this model. Uh, I'm not gonna drive it because it's plugged in, but uh, even though it is fully charged, I wanna have it, I don't wanna mess with it right now because I'm just doing a little introduction video for you. Now the car's a little dirty. Um, it tells you that it's still charging, as you can see right there. Uh, but it's good for 185 uh, kilometers and like that depends on how you drive the car but you turn off the ac the kilometers go up look at, listen to how quiet it is let's shut the door here for a sec it's fully on and it's got a full charge we got a little bug in here whatever and it's really hot in here because i got the black one with leather so as you can tell um, what's kind of neat about it is that you can actually like preheat and pre-cool the car while you're waiting for it while you're waiting to go somewhere so like if you find yourself like it's like a really hot day like today look it's like 29 Celsius that's not too bad but it's still pretty hot um, battery is actually pretty good temperature it hasn't been used but it's still in the direct sunlight um, what you can do is like turn on your AC like it is right now you know crank her up all right I want it down to 18 degrees. I think that's the lowest it can go. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's the lowest it can go. Um, but, and this is annoying. You don't want to hear all that noise. All right. It's, it's good to go. Uh, I got, I'm got. i pre-cooling it. It's still plugged in. So I, I, from what I gather, I haven't fully tested this. What, what I gather is it'll stay fully charged as long as you're plugged in, right? Um, and you can like pre-cool the car or preheat the car before you go anywhere which saves you a lot of hassle a lot of battery drainage while you're driving because you don't want to drive and then do all this cooling and heating before you go um, I mean while you're going so like it's not like the same as a regular combustion engine where the the engine gives off heat you know uh, so you want to take advantage of your home charger you know I think I charge over there with and uh, that will actually save your battery until you're ready to go and then you're good to go uh, on your way right so that's pretty cool um, I don't know if you guys know where I live I live let's say just outside of Woodstock okay Woodstock Ontario and I can make it to Cambridge and Kitchener and do a few errands and come back all this way so it's about an hour driving each way approximately and 200 kilometers is more than enough how you drive the car how fast you, you put on the accelerator pedal. All that stuff changes how you um, actually go about your battery consumption. So the more things you have on, the AC, like I would write, if I was worried about range today, I would turn my AC off, throw the windows down. Um, if I was worried about range, I wouldn't be flooring it. I'd keep it in uh, eco mode, see that? That just means you're gonna be uh, not using your acceleration as much. So I think the bars only go up to about here here 
when you're accelerating, maybe a little higher. Uh, but all in all, I'm very pleased with the Leaf. I can get around to where I need to go most of the time, unless I'm going far out of town. And that's the only time that you have to worry about charging it somewhere else. And then you can plan your route accordingly. So what I did, I, w I went around and checked out a bunch of my um, possible like stops that I might be doing. Um, so if you're going to Kitchener, you want to go to Toronto, you can go to Kitchener, charge in Kitchener, make it to Toronto, charge in Toronto, come back, right? But some people even get further range than me, depending on how you drive. It's all about how you drive. And um, But for the most part, I'm really happy. I think the newer Leaf will be a better, um, a better example of what Nissan can do for electric vehicles. Um, I'm very happy with this car and what it's used for. And I don't think you're ever gonna have a problem with it yourself. As long as you don't have to go very, very far. I'm actually pretty pleased with the blind spots here because um, blind spots are a big deal, right, with, when you're driving. Uh, when, you're, when I'm driving this car, I don't hesitate. I look behind me on, on each side of the shoulder here and I don't have any blind spots. I look in the mirror, no blind spots. Like we're all good here with this car. Uh, it's actually one of the best cars I've ever had in my life. It's so seamless. The steering wheel is very responsive. It feels nice in the hands. It feels like I'm driving a zippy little, um, peppy little car. Like, and the acceleration is belie unbelievable because um, it's like gradual. It's like a one speed electric drive. So it, it just goes nice and smoothly, guys. Um, and the audio is pretty good too. So what I would like you guys to do is uh, stay tuned for my future videos. I'm gonna demonstrate each feature. I'm gonna demonstrate driving. Of course with an assistant, because I can't you know, use my phone and drive at the same time in Ontario. Um, so I'm gonna have someone else, or I'm gonna use a mounted camera to record the video. But I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more about the Nissan Leaf. Uh, this is the 2017 version, um, the SL. There's also the SV and the S. Yeah, it sells the top of the end uh, model, so I, is it really worth going that high? I don't know. I haven't tried any other ones. Um, but for the most part, guys, I'm very, very, very happy with what I have here. Uh, I definitely like it better than my luxury uh, Chrysler 300 that we traded in for this one. Um, and then I'll give you a little bit more uh, information on what I did after. I have another uh, car. Uh, it was a Kia Sorento, so it was an SUV, right? Um, completely ice, combustible engine, right? Um, but what I did with that one is I traded it up for a truck, a big, you know, V6. Oh, it's not a big V6, but, you know, I traded it up for a V6 truck, and I'll explain why I did that later. I don't think, basically the, the gist of it is I didn't like my SUV in the end. Um, it was good It was good and reliable, but I didn't like it, all right? I like, I like the idea of a truck better. It's, you can keep things separate. Um, and haul things around that are messy. So that's part of the reason why I wanted that. Um, but I will go on to explain uh, the reasoning I had behind um, getting another truck instead of getting another electric vehicle. I think the bottom line is I think that the uh, trucks are a little bit further out than, than the cars are right now. Primarily being because battery power and like torque and like carrying capacities uh, definitely drain on the battery so like having a high-end truck big truck using a battery I think they need to come a little bit further with battery power but I know there are people out there uh, companies out there that are actually trying to make this technology available they're really trying to push it in trucks um, but we got to work on the cars first and I think Nissan did a great job obviously Tesla is a great great company that uh, sparked some of the EV movement um, and you got all these other auto manufacturers. If you don't know, have a look at Ford, um, GM. They have their own versions of electric vehicles too. I, my, my guess is in the future, Toyota's gonna come up with a Corolla electric. That's my guess, just saying. Um, anyways, guys, I think there's gonna be a big movement. I think it's gonna be worthwhile. I think you guys should definitely check it out. Um, if you're looking into an electric vehicle, there's rebates depending on where you live. I think you're really going to be happy with everything, guys. Um, at least if you have a two-car family, try one with electric. Get a, a wall-mounted uh, power supply, um, the 240, straight to your car. Um, I find it really worth it. I'll go more into detail about this car, 
how it's driven, how it's used, how I charge, everything in the next couple videos. Take care, guys. This is Dan from evconsumer.com.